on Insta. Okay, here we go. Oh, Jen, I did it. <laughs> oh, that's good. It feels good when you get something right. It does, doesn't it? Hi, everyone. Welcome to She's of Love. I'm here today with um, Jen Gillia, and we are talking about tapping into your personal power. And I did the tech stuff with Jen's help, but I did it without Juliet. And I've, um, I'm so proud of myself. Power. And I oh. did the tech stuff Can you with hear Jen's that? help, but I did it without Juliet. And I've, um, yeah, I'm so proud oh, yeah, of myself. That is. And I oh. did the tech stuff. It's like a it's like an echo chamber. <laughs> Do you have Facebook or something running in the background? Yeah. You'll turn that off. Yeah. Yeah. So not as smooth sailing as I thought. <laughs> But how did that feel? Like that's sort of tapping into your power, right? The power of of you because yeah, you were able to do something. Exactly. It's perfect timing because I was, like we were saying before we came live, I was intimidated by the technology and I was feeling like, oh, if there's hoops that I need to jump through because I'm not familiar, yeah, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. But as soon as that, echo started I knew I was like oh Facebook is open that's what's happening so um I all I needed to do was to trust that I was going to be able to fix it which I just did so I think that's to me an indication that personal power is all about trust it's about trusting mm -hmm. ourselves 100%. Um, I'm a massive believer. Like the stuff that I teach and the stuff that I preach, I guess you could say, is is all about that because a lot of us for a very, probably for a very long time, have not trusted ourselves enough. That's why we look externally for opinions of others or validation from other people outside of us. Psychics, when we go to psychics even, right? We want to know that it's going to happen or that this is the right thing to do. But the reality is we've actually got all the answers that we ever need and all the, the stuff inside of us that we ever need to do whatever we want. We just have to tap into it. Yeah, and trust it. That's the yeah. thing. Because that, for me, my personal journey to get me to where I am today, that's been the biggest takeaway or learning or gift or whatever you mm -hmm. want to say, like call it is that I've learned how to incrementally trust that I can be there for myself. Yeah. Because for me, a huge theme in my life has been lies and betrayal. Yeah. And so I've had to look where am I lying to myself, where am I betraying myself? Mm -hmm. Because when you can harness that power, whatever it is that's happening in your life that is your challenge and then you turn it and you look to where it's happening inside you, that's you harnessing the power that you possess yep. to unravel it and to get a handle on it and to change the course of those things happening to you or, you know, you're not no longer inviting those things into your life. So, yeah. That's been a huge thing. So this today <laughs> was like a little, um, not a test. I wouldn't say it's a test, maybe an opportunity for me mm. to step in and and go, okay, Claudia, you can do this, you know. And you'll probably find that the more you do that and the more you do trust yourself, the better you get at things, the more confidence you have because that builds confidence massively. Yeah. Yes, and I think another level to that too, to the confidence thing, because I I was talking to a friend of mine about this exact topic yesterday and the confidence grows as you, it's like a toddler learning to walk, right? 
they they get up on their feet and they start walking and they fall down and they get up and they fall down and they get up and they fall down. You know, and at first maybe they're holding onto a chair or onto a table or onto the wall or whatever to help them. And as they do it, they get more and more confident. And then eventually they're just walking and they're not even thinking about the fact that they're walking. They just get up and start walking. Yeah. And I think that's another level to it where you gain your confidence, but then you're, you know, like there's still a consciousness there that you're new to it or that, oh, I'm gaining my confidence. Like you're still not just doing it. Like it's not embodied yet. Mm -hmm. And it comes to a point where you've done it so much and you trust yourself so deeply that you're just doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's and part of you. Yeah. And this is how we also change things. So if we've been doing a particular thing or living a particular way for a period of time I've actually been reading um Joe Dispenza's book Breaking the Habit of Being You have oh, you read that no. wow if I if I can recommend any book that book is amazing because he talks about the brain he talks about the science behind things and connects it to why we do the things we do and then how to shift yeah and I'm I'm really loving understanding that stuff because I like to learn. I'm a I'm a knowledge whore. <laughs> and um when when you understand that the way that the brain works with our subconscious versus what we've been taught or conditioned, and our body is actually the one that connects. So when we get in that mindset of no, you know what, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do things differently, I wanna change, I wanna do this, even if you're gonna quit smoking right I want to quit smoking it's in your head right but your body is so conditioned it's just been normal to pick up and light mm. and it's like a habit you have to retrain your brain like mm. it, it, it's tapping into different parts of your brain and using the knowledge that you learn about things to remind yourself no I'm not doing that anymore this is what I like it, it has to make a conscious effort to look at shifting because if you don't you just revert backwards all the time and it's about creating new habits and and tapping in through the power within you that 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 drive to want to change because you don't want to be that anymore or you don't want to do that anymore. That's another aspect of it as well that can really drive you to be as you know whatever it is that you're looking at. Yeah, I so resonate with what you're saying because when I got married, I was smoking at that time, and. Not long after I got married, my husband was like, right, I'm going cold turkey. There was a, he, he heard on the radio that there had been scientifically proven a link between, this is back in 99 now, there had been a link proven to be between lung cancer and smoking. And this was new back then. And so that was enough for him to say, I'm going cold turkey, I'm giving up. But I didn't want to give up at that time. But I was shocked that he gave up because he had been smoking longer than me. Mm -hmm. And he just did it because he was like, I want to do this. And yep. he did it and he hasn't smoked since. He never smoked another cigarette since then. And he <laughs> actually made my life a misery until I gave up. He nagged me and nagged me, consistently nagged me until I gave up. And my life was so much worse <laughs> for smoking than for not smoking because of that mm -hmm. nagging that he was doing. And so I gave up. But I see this is the trick. I didn't really want to give up. I gave up because he was nagging me and I was sick of the nagging. So about, I think about six weeks later, I was out with my friends and they were all smoking. And I said, give me a cigarette. I want one. Because I, deep down inside, didn't really want to give up, right? So they gave me a cigarette and I was like, oh, I was enjoying this cigarette. We were, we were drinking, we were having a good time, we were laughing and I was smoking away and I was like, this is the life of, you know, and I was like, I've got my cigarette in my hand and um, 
I was like, give me another one. When I finished that one, I was like, yes, I want another one. Well, I had another cigarette and I felt so sick. The girls at the table were like, Claudia, are you okay? Because I went grey, ran mm. to the bathroom. I threw my guts up everywhere. It was horrible because I was so sick from the cigarette smoke. I never smoked again after that. Wow. Me, it was like my body had said, had spoken, Claudia, this is not for you. You are not to smoke. And I, after that happened, I was in company that was smoking and I could smell the cigarettes and I was like, oh, I'd love to have a cigarette right now. But my body remembered and it was like, uh-uh, line in the sand, no. And I never smoked again, even though my brain was saying, I want a cigarette. My body said, no way are you having a cigarette? We remember what happened last time. We're not going through that again. Yes. And so it was like, it, it for me, it was the most amazing experience because it is the first time I had, ex I had experienced my brain and my body being in opposition like that. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing. Like, no. I, I know, like, people that live in the power of positivity and all that kind of stuff, just change the way you think, right? Mm. It's not easy. When you've been conditioned to believe certain ways or when you see the world for certain ways, it's not easy to stop yourself and say, it doesn't have to be that way or I actually get to choose how I want to think. I don't have to think a certain way um, because sometimes it's just easier mm. to just run with it, right? Yeah. And I, I felt that for quite a big majority of my life when it, when it was like I, um, I thought I had to, to be at certain points in my life at certain ages. And when I wasn't, I was really hard on myself. Yes. Oh, that's a huge one. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, actually. Yeah. Because that's a massive program and conditioning that we have in society now and in, in, in families. Mm -hmm. it's like you know I remember thinking my son um he he had certain habits when he was a child that I had never seen before like he used to wring his hands and things like that and I was like oh what is that but he, it turns out that he was and I was thinking is that a sign of something or is he not hitting his marks you know things like that especially we do it with children when they're growing we have mm -hmm. these milestones that they have to hit so that we we are checking that they're growing properly and things like that and I was like maybe he's um you know maybe there's that's stimming I think it's called but it worked out no that he's a sensory child Bryn is a very sensory child so feeling things and having um certain fabrics on his skin he he really really notices it and it wasn't yeah. so much that there was an issue there it's just he's highly sensitive in that area and still is he's 13 now and he still has those you know like certain foods he loves because of the texture and things like yeah. that and I remember being like that as a kid <clears throat> too I did yeah, me too. to this I, I could have yeah you go yeah. I, I, no, I couldn't. I used to I used to suck my finger when I was a kid and I always had to have a bit of satin. If it wasn't a bit of satin, it was my hair. I would sit there and go like this to go to sleep and it was like just a real comfort thing. I still like doing that now, like silky things or my nails. If they if I've got a bit of oil on my nails, I'll sit there and go like this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and so like I was the same. I had a particular pillow case that I liked. And so I would rub the corner of it to go to sleep. Um, mm. There was a particular, I re even remember it, I was so little, but I, there was a particular bottle that my mum would give me water to go to sleep. Like I would suck on the bottle with water to fall asleep. And I remember the bottle was um, like a honey bear on the bottle. And I, I loved that bottle. I just remember and I used to have my pillowcase and my bottle and I would just, fall asleep within five minutes mm -hmm. and Bryn was like that and I think when we don't recognize 
or we see something like that and we freak out, we're not recognizing the pleasure in something like that, like, and the beauty in something like that, you mm -hmm. know, that the self-soothing side of, of, of being able to fall asleep and yeah. as a child with your little blankie or with, you know, whatever it is that helps you to, or your, your teddy bear or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think that when we put the pressure on ourselves to hit milestones or we're looking too fastidiously at something and we're, you know, reading into it and putting labels on things. It, we don't allow ourselves to have the room to be creative or to be who we are as people. And yeah. so I think that's such an important part of this conversation, what you've brought up is those milestones because it's constricting. Yeah. It can lead us in directions that are unnecessary for yeah. us and waste our energy and our time. And and creates complexes that don't don't need to be created. And sorry, there's a, my neighbor's dog. <laughs> I'm finding the inner power not to yes. yell at it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I I also found that on um on my journey, like I spent years trying. I had I struggled with my weight for a long period of my life, and it wasn't until I think when it comes to people wanting to change and wanting to shift perspectives and stuff, sometimes you've got to hit a real low um, in life. And it's not for, it doesn't happen to everybody and not for all things, but um, when they're impacting your life quite big, um, you can, you can come to a point where it's like, I, I can't do this anymore. And I got to that stage. I, I had gotten to a hundred and over 140 something kilos and I'm only short you know how short I am I'm only 164 centimeters so I'm like a little I'm not sorry I don't say I'm short I'm fun size yeah but um <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but um I got to this stage where I couldn't walk for more than three to five minutes before I was bent over trying to stretch my back out because I was so sore yeah and I it's actually on um I recorded a like a video journal and I, I share that on social media. And I remember sitting right here and doing a, a, video, a bit of a vlog and being so frustrated and upset with myself that I'd let myself get this big and not knowing what to do, feeling helpless because of the pain. And I just remember crying and thinking, I can't do this anymore. I can't. And that, when the fear of staying the same I've said this plenty of times before. When the fear of staying the same outweighs the the fear of change, that's when the transformation and the the changes and the something inside of me just was like, you can't do this anymore. And even though I was absolutely petrified of, because I'd tried n numerous diets, and I'd go really good, maybe three four months, and then I'd go backwards and put on ten kilos more. And the same thing kept happening. It was just the same. I was repeating the same patterns. Yeah, but it wasn't until, yeah, that wasn't until this moment in me that happened, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, something flipped, a, a flipped, like a a switch just flipped, and although I was petrified because I'd spent I'd spent again majority of my life suffering with anxiety, and my anxiety stemmed from around medical things. Like oh, I'd be sitting there and feel a little flutter in my heart and think, Oh my god, was am I having a heart attack? Or I'd get a pain in my in my shoulder and I'd think, Oh, is it a clot? Like I my my <laughs> mind would go from zero to a hundred really quick. And people used to think I was a hypochondriac. I didn't I know this was a real fear. Like it might have just been something little flutter, but my brain went straight there, like fight or flight mode. I was like, holy fuck, I'm gonna die. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started to understand my spirituality and that I'm very clear sentient and I feel things around other people. And when when I'm getting messages, I actually feel it in my body that I was able to kind of shift that out. But it, when I started to step out of out of comfort and into courage with making this decision of to have, I didn't have to have it, right? I opted to go and have the doctor take 80% of my stomach out. Like when I say that out loud still to this day, I'm like, oh God, what yeah. you know? but 
that fear, I conquered it, right? And then when I started to conquer it, like, like things just got better and better. My confidence, like I started to lose the weight. I found more love for myself. I started to accept myself a bit more. Because I've always been fairly confident and been able to, I've got the gift of the gab, right? But I, I wasn't always like that with everybody because sometimes I like to see other people, well, not all the time, sorry. I, I like to see other people shine. So if I was in the vicinity of someone who I felt needed to be, was a talker too, but needed a bit more, I would go within, right? I'd dim my sparkle so they could shine. And when I now that I've got this confidence, I don't do that anymore. Not to say that I don't let people shine, but I'm not afraid to hold myself like I don't hold myself back anymore and the opportunities that happen because of that um the life that you've like there's happiness there's so much there so when we're able to tap into that power and start to use it the universe it's like the universe is like oh okay she wants some good shit now she knows who she is she's you know shining that light to others to show them let's just throw all this awesome stuff and life just gets continues to get better and better it's not to say that there's no shitty times because we all go through that. It's like that, right, with life. But when you actually learn how to do that or, or start to trust yourself again because I didn't trust myself for so long. It's that it's that thing that's closest to you in your yeah. self. When that changes, that space inside your heart, that voice that you speak to yourself with, the thoughts that come in, the just the baseline of your personality. Yeah. When that that's the stuff we're talking about. That's the change. Yeah. It needs to change in there, that closeness in, to yourself. Yeah. When that is filled with love. When you're when you decide, okay, I'm going to love that part of myself and I'm going mm-hmm. to shine it out. Yeah. And it's not that easy to say, oh, I'm just going to love myself and shine it out. Nah. It's like it's like a decision that is made through, for you, like what you said, through frustration and through that low point for you. Everybody's different. Everybody's going to have a trigger in them that's going to say whatever it is, it's going to say, I, I want to change, yeah. I want to change in my life. And I think that that's the first step to harnessing the personal power that we each possess because I don't care who you are, everybody has it. Mm-hmm. Everybody comes to this earth with a, a, a reservoir of essence of themselves that can they can shine out to the world and bring in and attract the things that they want for themselves in their life 100 percent. so people always say to me when I'm doing my lives and I'm doing the stuff that I do but how do I do that how yeah it's literally like I have I don't know I'm not going to show you (laughs) because but I have things up on my wall that that like one up here says always be humble and kind the best is yet to come and one here says always be your own sunshine never let anyone dull your sparkle family where life begins and love never ends and in my bathroom right next to the mirror I have you are beautiful in every single way so having these things like people talk about vision boards and for those of you that don't know what a vision board is, basically it's just a big board where you have all these different things that you want, like a dream board, like all these, you might want to go on a trip somewhere, you might want more money, you might want a big house, you might want a lover, you might want a family. You have all these things on this vision board, so your, your brain is constantly looking at them or seeing them and being like, ah, okay, because our brain needs to see things to make them true, right? And when we see them over and over and over again, just like how we will program. Yes, I was going to say, <laughs> you saw the spark happening. Yeah. Just like yeah. we will program. Exactly. And it, exactly that's what happens. We are, when we learn something over and over and over again, it becomes yeah. embedded in us and then it becomes habit and then we embody it. So yeah. if we're seeing all of this stuff, even when you don't believe it, right? And Louise Hayes has a book 
um, you can heal your life or you can heal your shop or whatever it is. And there's a workbook that comes with it. It's called Mirror Work. And it's literally picking up a mirror and looking at yourself. Feels awkward as fuck when you start, but sitting there and saying, do you look good today? You've got really pretty eyes. Or I love you. You're beautiful. Mm-hmm. And you don't believe it at first. It feels funky as, but give it 21 days and you feel a shift in yourself. You feel yourself lifting. You're not hunched over anymore. You've got your shoulders back because you are taking pride in yourself because you are starting to feel for yourself. Yeah. And others say, yeah, but how do you fall in love with yourself? Literally, it's as easy as treating yourself as if you were going and, and on, a, on a date or you were seeing someone that you really liked and was falling in love with them. You treat yourself the same way. Take yourself out on dates. Buy yourself nice things. Write yeah. yourself little love notes and, and about how awesome you are. Yeah. You know, and it's practicing it. Yeah. Like that's just brought up for me something that happened yesterday. Um, my son likes to come home. He's He's got a, you know, a, a curfew. When the lights in the street go on, it's time to come home right so that happens at around eight o'clock and so for him to get home on his scooter it takes him about half an hour so it's like you need to be home here at 8 30 and he's always late always late so I thought to myself maybe I should buy him a watch because he has his phone which is always in his backpack so I thought if I buy him a watch then he can see what time it is and so I started looking around for watches and I sent him some photos of watches and I said, which one do you like? Cause I'm going to get you a watch. And I was getting him a really nice one. It's shock resistant because he is such a physical child. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, getting a shock resistant one would be perfect for him. And he was like, mom, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. I don't want you to spend your money on me. That's what he said to me. And I was like, oh, my goodness, like, is it? Then I sort of went into mum mode and I was like, is it because he doesn't want the watch and he's just trying to be nice or is does he really think he doesn't deserve it because it's too expensive? And um, so when I got home, he was like, mum, I don't want the watch. And I said to him, is it because you it's expensive or is it because you don't want the watch? And he said, well, it's kind of a bit of both. I don't think I'll use it and you're spending a lot of money on something that for me that I'm not going to appreciate I don't I'm not going to use it very much and then he sent me a a little real thing from TikTok it was this guy who was um he got something expensive from his mum and you saw the expression on his face and Bryn sent it to me and he said this is how it made me feel this was what I was feeling when you sent me the photos of the watches. And it was definitely a worthiness thing. And I said, you've had those deep feelings in, in you about me buying you something expensive. And he said, yeah, I did. And I said, Bubby, you you are worth it. You deserve nice things. Okay, I'm not going to get you a watch because you're not going it's not something for you. But that's not to say that when I buy something expensive for you, you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, mum, I love you. You know, like it, it, I think it got into him that he is worth spending the money on and that sometimes we can spend money on ourselves and not feel guilty about it or not feel like we don't deserve it. Yeah. And he's 13. Yeah. This stuff at 13. It gets yep. into us so early in life, this programming. Mm-hmm. And you don't even, like, as his mum, I didn't even see it coming. I didn't even see it happening. No. And, 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 and that's what that it is. Triggers it in us. You know, it could be anything in life, anything yep. could happen that triggers it, it in us. Yeah. And it could be as simple as saying, like, I remember. I remember being a single mum and we'd go to the shops and my son, when he was little, he'd be like, oh, mum, can I have a present? I'd be like, okay, you can pick something. 
and it wasn't until like I probably had said no like I'd probably spoken quite a lot about money and how we didn't have a lot and all this kind of stuff yeah right um but then when we'd go to the shops he started doing it he would pick up these items and be like I'll just go and have a look oh no that's too much and it was only like 10 or 20 dollars or whatever and I'm like no baby it's all right like it 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 puts it into their head so this is the other thing when for the for all those parents out there when you feel as when you think your kids aren't listening they are Uh, they are and they don't do what you say they do what you do yeah massively because they're like although like we can't sit there and say don't do that and then we do it Mm. right a little bit (laughs) <laughs> really cool yeah. my mum used to say my mum used to do it and her saying was do what I say not what I do yeah but that's not how it works and I was thinking to myself uh eh, eh. like and I was still a kid and yeah I was thinking, no you don't get to be a hypocrite just because you're a parent yeah and and look some some kids do do what their parents like I was one of the I my mum and dad only ever have to had to raise their voice at me and I'd ah, a little yeah. talk right <laughs> Um, and I was always trying to um, meet, well, not meet. They didn't have expectations of me, but I wanted to make them proud. I wanted to, yeah. I didn't want to do anything wrong. I didn't want to make them upset. So I'm I, here. yeah, so I would, I was a straighty 180 for so long. I stayed in the square box. I didn't step out of it because it was the rules, right? Yeah. Whereas now I get the rubber and rub the box out because I don't like <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing we get to we get to choose we get to decide I don't want to think like that anymore I don't want to be like that anymore I want to change I don't have to and it's not that our parents or our parents parents or our their parents parents did anything wrong mm-hmm. they've always done the very best with what they've known and and what they've tried to do for you and although sometimes people might look at it and think oh that's a load of shit my parent was this that and the other deep down a majority of the time it is it is true they only know what they know look at the lives that they've had and what they've experienced and then what they pass on to us subconsciously even because we do things without thinking sometimes I know when I was starting my my journey um with I had to try to start to eat a bit better before I um went on my strict diet yeah. So it was uh it was cold. And I only ever drink hot drinks in the winter or like when it's cold. It was a rainy day and I was like, oh, I'll have a hot chocolate. And I had sugar free hot chocolate. So I put the sugar free satchel in and I put the the milk and all that other stuff in. Oh not the milk, the um water, the hot water in. I took a sip, I was like, oh, without even thinking, like knowing also in my head that this was sugar free, I picked up a spoon and put two things of sugar in my sugar-free drink <laughs> and then I stopped and then when I, I I realized what I just did and I went oh my god wow That's I did not moment yeah it, it made me realize how the body responds and this what that's why this book that I'm reading is amazing it's like it, it, there's a part in the book that talks about where you might forget a pin number or a password or something like that and you can't remember it for the life of you but as soon as your finger hits that keyboard your fingers remember yeah your body remembers it's not you that remembers your body remembers because of the practice yeah. like I I still sometimes think to myself oh is it that number before that number and then I just look at my phone pad or or on the numbers on the keyboard and I'm like oh it's that yeah and it, it, it blew my mind when I started reading that and I was like wow our body remembers so much Mm-hmm. And that's where the conflict can have because sometimes our bodies, not, not sometimes, our bodies store trauma. Yeah. And trauma for everybody is at different levels, right? So trauma could be being abused as a kid, but trauma can also be having a parent that's mellow out and really, really good with you and then snapping one time because they've had a really shitty day. That can actually give you a trauma. Yeah, because you've trusted them and then all of a sudden they've broken that trust. And yeah. you be like, oh, and, and wow, that, trust can be broken. Yeah, and when you feel a sensation in your body, whether it's through someone yelling at you, like I remember one of mine was um, I was about three and I was going next door. My my 
my auntie lived next door. I wanted to go next door to see if they were home. But I walked next door and there was a motorbike driving up and down the street. And I was petrified I wouldn't leave the front, my auntie's front. And I was there for ages until I worked up enough courage. Like I was crying and I pooed myself because yeah. <laughs> um, I was so scared. And then I remember running in. I still remember that. And still to this day, if I hear loud noises like motorbikes or even if I'm sitting here doing work and one of the boys or my husband walks past and slams the, the, the door a little bit too loud, it sends a ripple from my body where other people probably won't I'll be like, that wasn't loud but it shocks me it my body remembers yep. and this is where when we have when we're looking at dealing with uh healing those types of things embodied practices like meditation um somatic work um uh, linear movement all that type of stuff can help because you're actually allowing it to release from your body not just from your mind yeah which is yeah. it's really powerful because embodiment you can because if you if you learn all this stuff um, and, you you know, you're a person like me who likes, I'm a knowledge or like I said before, I like to go and do different courses and learn about different modalities and all this kind of stuff. If you don't actually live it and you're not embodying it, then you just know a lot of cool shit. Yeah. yeah. Right? 100%. Yeah, 100%. And the way I've experienced the learning in my life is – and it's something that I've been noticing a lot recently is that my learning comes through experiences that, that I'm having and then there's a need. I'm like, okay, that happened. This was my, this is how I dealt with it. Um, oh, I really, I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the way I dealt with that. Or, oh, next time that happens or something similar happens to me, I want to be prepared or I want to do something different and when I see a need happening there for me that's when I will go and I'll embody something or learn a new way or um you know like if if a trauma if I'm experiencing trauma and it's affecting my life I'll go okay I need I'd like to change that and so I focus on that so that's how I learn it it's yeah. it comes through the physical world for me yeah, oh, and saying that, I've just had a realization actually, because that's how Bryn learns too. And here I was thinking that his physical learning came through his male side, through the patriarchal side, but no, mm. it's coming through me, because that's how I learn. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice little realization because that's exactly what happens for me. It's a physical experience in the world. And then I will manage it, right? I'll say, okay, that's good. I'm going to keep going with it. Or no, that's not how I want to proceed with this. I'm going to change it or I'm going to focus on that or whatever it is. Yeah. And, um, I, I'm, I'm the same in that sense too. When I quit smoking, I had bronchitis. See, there you go. And it was that holy shit, I can't breathe. I don't like this. Yeah. But same thing with what happened with the surgery. I can't do this. My body doesn't like this. My body was screaming at me. Yeah. And I listened and, and that's when, you know, the action the actions come. So yeah. for some people, it could just be a thought and some people might be really lucky enough to be like, you know what, I'm just going to do this and do it without yeah. even thinking about it and follow yeah. through. Yeah, but some people really struggle to to separate and then be actually be able to stand in and embody it unless something like that happens. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So to, you know, it could be something as simple as sometimes it's my watching my kids, right? If they're doing something and I think, oh, they get that from me or they've seen me do that or whatever, I'm like, okay, that's time to change. It's time to change that because I don't want to pass those things on to my kids. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, you know, um, I don't know, something physical that I'm feeling in my body, like you were saying, bronchitis, or if I'm feeling a pain, like it's like when I started my new job, I was physically not, 
not prepared for this job that I started. And um, it shocked me because I thought, oh, I'm able-bodied, I'm, you know, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm fine. And then I tried to do this physical job and it was so difficult. And I was coming home every night and I was in pain, physical pain, my body was feeling pain. And then I was like, is it just that I'm old or is it that I'm not fit? But it wasn't because I'm old. It wasn't because of that. It was because I wasn't physically fit enough to do the job that mm -hmm. I was doing. And so I concentrated on that, getting fitter and feeling stronger in my body to do the things that I wanted to do without yeah. the hassle, without the pain, without the struggle that I was feeling. Yeah. And and this is this is how miraculous our bodies are, right? Mm -hmm. We can it can repair itself, right? It can adapt to become stronger to be able to do those types of things. So if we can do that, why can't we learn to love ourselves when it's it's not even that physical? Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's it's a lot to do with spiritual and, and and emotional stuff. But I think the one message one message that I absolutely love to share with everyone is if you when you go within you're never without and everything always comes back to you yeah. it's your life it's your experience this is what you're creating so you can sit there and wallow in self pity and say this all this shit is happening to me right and you can live a miserable life mm. or you can realize this is actually happening for me and i get to shift and change it i don't have to live in that way i don't need to be stuck in that in that shit yeah. i can move forward yeah. And when we do that, like I said to you before, when we do that and when we start to shift and change and we realise the essence that is in us, like I, I sometimes I freak out, like I, I have these moments where I really sit and ponder and I'm like, basically we're just a bunch of aliens floating on a rock in the middle of the fucking universe. Like if that's not magic, what the fuck? We are magic. Yeah. Like when we when you really get deep in thought, we're literally energy. Mm. We learned it in science. Neutrons, electrons, protons, all the rest of it, and atoms. We're vibrating. If you look at yourself under a microscope, you you're vibrating. Mm. And that's magic. Mm. Well, it's magical. Yeah. So we need to realize that we are magical. We are we have so much beauty within us, even if we don't see it externally. Mm -hmm. It's in there. You just need to bring it to the top to let it. And then when you do, that's when it shines out. And it's it's really, really beautiful. Yeah. What you're saying now is, to me, the way I see what you're saying is it's perspective, right? So if we allow ourselves to see from a different perspective and not just the perspective that we've grown up to believe, mm -hmm. not just the perspective of our parents, not just the perspective of society, the media. If you're willing to say yes to the possibilities that you are magic, because what, you know, if you say that to, if you had said that to me 15 years ago, I would have laughed in your face. I would have, yeah, magic, yeah, 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 whatever, you know. Um, I didn't believe this stuff. I didn't, I thought it was just, you know, po like that positive self-help stuff. It's all mm. focus, focus woo-woo stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, And I remember, and this relates to this other story that I remember growing up hating my body learning that my body was my enemy because it didn't do the things that I wanted it to do it didn't look the way mm. I wanted it to look it yeah. was you know not it, it wasn't the shape of the fashion at the time and so I wasn't in fashion I was mm -hmm. out of fashion constantly out of fashion yeah and so I wasn't cool and I wanted to be cool. I wanted to be popular. I wanted to be 
looked at. I wanted to get attention. I wanted all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I truly believed, truly, truly believed that I wasn't beautiful and that I was, um, mm -hmm. I was, you know, out of the leading pack. I was out of that. And so learning to love my body and learning to feel beautiful, like that, that gorgeous, practice you were telling me about looking in the mirror and saying you know you have gorgeous eyes and you, you're beautiful and all that would have made me puke back then I would have been going oh yeah right as if I'm going to stand in the mirror and say all that stuff to myself because not only didn't I believe it I believed that I was ugly and I believed that I was not beautiful at all and that my body mm. you know it wasn't my body was not beautiful my body was actually my enemy. And what I know now, you know, if I could go back and talk to that girl back like now, how I am now and what I believe now, if I could go and talk to that girl, it would be if you, if, if your life has led you to this point where you believe that you're so ugly and you're so unworthy of love and you are, you know, so out of the leading pack, so far behind everybody else. If you, if life could teach you that and you could get to this point, what is stopping you from doing the opposite thing? What's stopping you? Mm -hmm. You've, you've um, been told all of these things through the media, through your parents, through, you know, your mother's messaging, through the way you see yourself and through what you've chosen to believe, mm -hmm. you could flip it. It's yep. possible to flip it. It's actually possible to say, okay, I'm going to choose a different path yep. for myself. Now that is hard to do. It's really difficult to do, but it's possible. Yes. I didn't even think that it was possible to do it back then yeah. imagine if imagine if this is the stuff that I really think they should be teaching in schools about you know accepting and and what it is is it's the fear of other people's opinions yes massively yeah because we need that validation from yeah people I'm not I'm gonna say we sh like we shouldn't because that's who we are. We want, we want that love. We want that connection. That's the human connection. But we get so riled up and so caught up in the way that we think we're supposed to be that we forget who we are or who we, yes. who we really are and what we, what we are is enough, you know. Because I truly There's... believed that if I was beautiful, this, is, this was what I grew up to believe, right? I truly believed that if I was beautiful, I could be loved. If I wasn't beautiful, mm -hmm. so my physical being was what determined whether I was lovable or not. Yeah. I truly believe that. I don't believe that anymore, but back then I did. And it, you, it would have been so difficult for somebody to convince me otherwise. Yeah. And, and it wasn't until I think it was the turning point for me was when my father died. Um, I mean, I had been leading up to that point, but in 2014, when my dad died, he, losing him was because he was my connection. He was he was the like my truly my heart. My relationship mm -hmm. with my dad was so special, and it was to me. It was special to me. So losing him was like a disconnection from everything to me and so yeah. instead of it being um a, a negative thing what that did was that it opened me up to all the possibilities because he was no longer there to connect to I could now connect in another way to something else that was to make me feel loved or make me feel or help me to feel accepted in the world because he yeah. accepted me and loved me so deeply. It was your safe space. Yes. And so I was like, all right, now I can, now that's gone. I've, I've, the connection can be made 
to, to anything that I choose. And I chose myself. I, I chose to feel that connection with me because he, I lost him at a point in my life where I was on this journey of self realization and self activation and learning how to become more independent and be my motivator, my internal motivator of myself. So I started to watch the thoughts that I was having and I started to speak and have a voice and yeah. stand up for myself and things like that because I no longer had him to do it for me. Yeah. And yeah, massively. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing. When we when we start to look at the messages that are coming into us and we ask ourselves the question, is this serving me? So, you know, as, as a teenager growing up, if I had had that one question in my brain, if I listen to this message, is it serving me? If somebody tells me that I'm fat and ugly, is that serving me? Am I going to believe that person? Yeah. But I didn't have that wherewithal or the, even the thought process in my brain to filter it out. I just, I was open to all criticism and I lived my life from one compliment to another. And so yeah. that was my kind of like my guide. If somebody was giving me positive feedback, I would go down that direction. If I was getting negative feedback, then I would be like, okay, change direction. And it was all coming from without me, without outside mm -hmm. of me, not within me. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it happens because we're constantly looking to other mm -hmm. people. It happens, it starts when we're younger because we are conditioned or we're taught that we have to, we get the love from our parents, we get the food from our parents, we get all this stuff from the, the ones around us. So yeah. we think that everything else has to come from external. Exactly. But we're the whole package. We've got it all within us, but it's about learning how to self-soothe. It's about learning how to go within and trust yourself again and and like you said it's not easy when you've had years and years of conditioning the opposite yeah but it's doable yeah and then comes a point I think in life where the the child in you grows up and so instead of constantly looking outside ourselves for these things that we start to turn that mirror back onto ourselves and start looking at ourselves and saying I can give myself this I can trust myself in this situation so I think yeah. it's really important like for Juliet she's in New Zealand at the moment and she's learning how to travel um, and trust herself because she doesn't have me there with her she's not at home so she's got all her own money she's making all her own decisions and I think that's really important is to go out get get out of the nest and go and learn how to fly and yeah. learn how to trust yourself, learn how to make these decisions for yourself, learn that your personal power is there for you whenever you need it. And Massive. Through actually doing it. Yep. Yeah. Big, 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 big. Um, I absolutely love that. Mm. Um, and that's why I love a lot of what I do is around like, yeah, I do the psychic and the medium stuff. And yeah. but this is the thing. And this is why I, I, when people say it's all a load of bullshit, not really, because the, the first step is, this, and this is what I'm so grateful for, right? When I started to tap into all of that stuff and, and to learn how to channel and, and, and use the cards and listen yeah. to spirit. We are spirit. We start to listen to ourselves. Yeah. And a lot of the times our guides are ourselves. Like uh, it, when you understand how it all works, it just, it makes so much more sense. So don't, don't fear it is, is, is a message. I, I feel like if you fear it, then you're fearing yourself because we yeah. are spirit. Yeah. Uh, we are source energy. We are all that kind of stuff, but it, it's, it's so much deeper than that. And when we when we understand that um, 
there's that magic within us like the magic uh, one of my favorite sayings the magic is found in the work that we avoid so the stuff that we keep putting away right the stuff that we don't want to deal with the stuff that we just we know that we should change what we don't do that's when the the magic starts to happen and when you do it it becomes like when you start to realize that this is what happens when you start to, it becomes addictive because that feeling like that high and I don't want to get people misconstrued with what I mean it's not that because we, we all know that there's that toxic positivity out there right yeah. you're not allowed to you, everything is just oh someone treat me oh that's okay da, 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 da. no it's not a, it's not that it's about feeling your emotions yeah. regulating your emotions knowing that you're allowed to be woe is me and it's stuck in self-pity for a bit just don't unpack and live there yeah like how does a how does a beautiful garden grow with really good fucking fertilizer what's yeah. fertilizer made of yeah. shit <laughs> right as long as we're not sitting in it making patty cakes and eating it yeah or you know living and breathing in it for too long yeah it's about processing the emotions it's about going through and then letting it go letting it fall into the garden so that you can grow. And that teaches us because it is all within us always. It always comes back to you because this is your reality and you get to decide how you live, not anybody else. Yeah, It might sound or seem like people are trying to control you, but reality is the only person's opinion that matters is yours. The only person that has the choice or the choice and the chance to change things is you yeah. and that just it all comes down it always comes back to you always yeah. so yes and that was a decision that I made because I was like you I got to a point where I was tired of allowing other people to determine my happiness mm. I was tired of that it was yeah. like every time I got because People are going to have opinions, right? And I used to think to myself, oh, well, I need to have blanket opinion all in consensus that I'm a good person and that I'm a pretty person and that I'm not a fat person and all of this stuff. I need consensus to give mm. me that validation. And that's an impossible task. That's an impossible task because one person's going to, see you a certain way and another person's going to see you a different way depending on their filters yeah so there's no consensus it doesn't no. exist and so I got to a point where I was tying myself in such knots trying to make everybody else accept me that I got tired of it I was mm -hmm. spending so much energy doing that and so in the end I was like no I can't be doing this all the time. And through my one decision to stop doing it and two, the decision and the intention of looking for a new way and a better way, I found that the answer lay with me mm -hmm. and my own opinion of myself. And that was the, opinion, the last opinion on the list for me at one point. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what I thought. It didn't matter what I, you know, how I thought I looked or how I thought I um, behaved. It was yeah. how everybody else looked, saw me that was important. Mm -hmm. And when I figured that out, after being so burnt out and exhausted by it, I was so relieved. Yeah. Was such a relief. It was like, oh, I get to choose and I get to decide and when you think about it after years of thinking that you can't to then step into that that's pretty fucking exciting it is it's so that it's a whole new world yeah it's like I get to pick and choose I don't have to stay in this dead-end job I don't have to stay with this shitty partner I can make choices I can have a better life you can you can you can you always can yeah it, like even the word impossible says I am possible yes Unless you're speaking in another language, and then then um, I don't know. But <laughs> in English, it works. <laughs> yeah, in English, in English, it works. And I, I, I think people just need to realize that you can be, do, think any way you want. It just takes time 
it takes consistency and it takes learning to trust yourself yeah yeah on that note and because that was the note we started on about trusting yourself we yeah. come full circle to trusting yourself and I think that is so beautifully rounded um, because that really is the secret it's about trusting yourself and trusting that your personal power is there for you to be able to tap into it yeah because we're all perfectly imperfect right yeah and and knowing that you're going to make mistakes and it's okay it's all right to trip over as long as you get back up and you keep going it's like yeah you know, the toddler analogy again the toddler's going to fall yeah that. I've got a card that says mistakes are brilliant don't be scared of the little fuckers. They'll teach you more than you'll ever learn any other way. And yeah. the most successful people in the world have screwed up that many times. They won't tell you, but they have. Because yeah. that's how they grow. Yeah. That's how we need to grow. We need to not not fear mistake, not fear being wrong or things not working out. We need to think we need to when it happens, we need to look at the, the gaps and be like, okay, that's what I did last time. Let's try something different this time. Yeah. Voices. Jen, I've loved this conversation. That's always a gem. I love it. I love having <laughs> these chats with you guys. Yeah. Always. Awesome. Do you feel complete from this now? I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I was beautifully, it came around from the beginning all the way back to the to the beginning again. So I feel like that was perfectly timed. And we're at, <laughs> I think we're at five past ten now. So Thank you so much for your time and coming on with me. You're and, welcome, beautiful. And helping me through the panic of the tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I thrive in that shit now. Like, that's the thing. I used to panic. I thrive in it a bit more now. Probably not so much when there's other things like we discussed, but yeah. <laughs> when I'm certain things and I used to not know how to do it and you learn how, now it becomes your, your game. What the hell is that? Now it becomes your game. And yeah. yeah. I absolutely love talking. Anytime you want me back, I am definitely 100% oh, in. Yeah. Because yes. I love this conversation. Back. Yes, we will. Yes, most definitely. Thank you for awesome. the conversation today and for your time. No worries, honey. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time. Mm. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Okay. Is that, have I done it? No, it still says live over here. Is it? How do I do it? There you go. Oh, no.